Reverse by Black K Cat. Chapter 12. The Satude. Despite being probably the weakest of the five greatest shinobi villages, Sunagakure makes a damn impressive sight, that's for sure. Whoa! Naruto sounds awestruck too. Kurama, why did they build their village like that? Kurama's not entirely certain when he became the resident history professor, but since there's no one else to answer except Fuji, who treats villages as being convenient concentrations of Odin, but otherwise just cute little human peculiarities, he sighs and answers, Because it's a good defense kit, the cliffs can keep out an invading army, and they've got terraces on the outside so that Suna Shinobi can stand there and attack without being in too much danger. See that narrow crack in the cliff? That's the only way for most people to get in. So the Shuna Shinobi know exactly who's in their village all the time. Like on Oz walls and gates. But you can get around the gates really easily, Naruto points out, seemingly confused by this lapse of logic. And of course you would know that at six and a bit of change. Kurama was mostly asleep for Naruto's adventures outside the walls, but he remembers enough. Yeah, he agrees amused. And we're gonna do the same here. If that bastard and his freak squad manage to track us here, I don't want them finding you just by asking at the gate. Freak squad? Who are they? Naruto leans back to look up at them, blue eyes curious. Are those the Shinomi Hokage Jitsi sent after you from the forest? Fuji huffs, shaking out her tails, and then leaps nimbly down the side of the sand dune towards the start of the rocky ground edging Suna's cliffs. Don't worry about it, Naruto. She says cheerfully, my illusions will cover our tracks for a while, and Karama-sama is too fast and smart for anyone to catch. She seems to be forgetting just how it is they met, but Karama isn't a bad reminder. That bit of humiliation will molder unrecalled until the end of time if he has any say in it. Right, he agrees instead. Squinting up at the setting sun, he adds, Fuji, can you head around the west side and then let us down? We can go over the cliffs where the sun will be in the guard's eyes. Keeps us from having to wait for nightfall. I hope you don't think you're getting rid of me that easily, Karama-sama. She huffs, even as she drifts left, leaping large cracks in the ground and veering around outcroppings of stone. This is the most fun I've had in decades, so I'm definitely coming with you. Yay! Now Rizzo cheers, leaning forward to bury his face in her white fur. Can you be my Fujini? I don't see why not. The vixen says loftily, though Garama can read both pleasure and embarrassment in the titch of her tails and the flick of her ears. If you really have the Kyubi inside of you, that makes us almost kin anyway. All foxes look up to the Kyubi after all. Having nine tails makes you practically a god. Personally, Kurama doesn't quite see the appeal in being a back mule and running for miles on end, but he supposes that it's probably a bit more exciting than hunting mice and birds all day. You'll have to stay small, he warns her, though he reaches out to give her a shoulder a gentle stroke and thanks. And nearby, if possible. If things go south, I want to be able to leave in a hurry. I'm sure whatever you plan to do will turn out perfectly, Kurama-sama, Fuji says stubbornly, and even if it doesn't, I'll help however I can. Me too! Naruto chimes in. He lets go of Fuji to make the seal for the shadow clones and grins like a conquering hero. I can be an army! This is not exactly what Garama intended teaching him that, but it's Naruto. The matter was bound to come up eventually, and Karama already knows exactly how much good it will do to argue with him. Namely, none at all. Let's save that for a last resort, huh? He counters, painfully amused, and wraps an arm around the little boy's waist to keep him from overbalancing. Fuji, here's good. The vixen skids to a stop and crouches to let them slide off. As soon as their feet are steady, she shakes herself, then lets go of her transformation. A much more normal-sized fox bounces out of the smoke, and Karama leans down so she can leap up onto his shoulders. She curls around his neck, peeking out from under the fringe of his hair, and yips cheerfully. Ready to go, Karama-sama! Karama chuckles, then scoops Naruto up and slings the boy over his back. Arms and legs around me if you can, kid. He orders, we're going to have to go fast for a bit. There are six terraces leading up, each one a good two meters wide. The setting sun is behind him, eyes searing red and gold spreading out across the horizon, and Karama can't sense any overt hostility from the path up. The only chakra signatures he can feel are heading away along the curve of the cliff face, and he really hopes it stays that way. 
Surely, surely he's due to have something go right by now. He's in Naruto's body. Surely his luck can't be all bad. Smart arms curl around his neck, careful of Fuji, legs wrapping around his waist, and Kurama can't find a smile as he reaches up to touch Naruto's hands in silent reassurance. Well, definitely not all bad, though parts could use improving. Ready? He asks and gets two sounds of confirmation. Taking a breath, he channels just a trickle of chakra, not enough to be noticed, but enough to give him some power, and leaps, bouncing up the first three terraces! No one shouts. There are no alarms, not even any traps, and Kurama lets himself breathe out. He dodges left, tracing his way a little further west, and then clears the next two levels in quick succession. Still nothing. It would almost be ridiculous, except the tempo of Kurama's heartbeat says it really isn't. He pauses again, checking for chakra, but as luck would have it, there's what feels like a civilian district below. There are a few scattered chakra signatures, but it seems like this is one of Suna's poorer areas. Shinobi aren't generally ones to be poor. If they're that bad at their jobs, they tend to just be dead. So those who do live here are scattered, the exception, rather than the rule. It's a stroke of fortune that Kurama is more than willing to take. With all of this speed he can muster, he leaps forward, clearing the last terrace and hurling himself right over the lip of the cliff. There's another road carved out of the rock about halfway down, and Kurama throws himself across it in a blur, one hand on Naruto's back, the other hanging onto Fuji, and then flips over the side and down into thick shadows. In the alley, someone startles, dropping something, but Kurama doesn't stick around to see if they'll raise an alarm. He bolts into the deep gloom of the surrounding buildings with the wall looming overhead and lets the darkness swallow him. Everybody okay back there? He asks as soon as they're a safe distance from curious ears tucked back behind what smells like a restaurant. Kurama eyes the handful of neatly stacked bins sitting outside the back door for a moment, then drops to one knee and lets Naruto slide down. Can we do that again? Naruto sounds breathless, and he's grinning widely when he grabs Kurama's hand. Kurama knee, that was so cool! Despite himself, Kurama chuckles and reaches out to ruffle the massive blonde air. Glad you approve, kid. Fuji, you good playing a fur ruff. From where her head is resting daintily on her paws draped across his shoulders, Fuji makes a vaguely offended sound, and her three tails tickle his arm as they flick. I'm very happy where I am, Kurama-sama, she says disdainfully. Though the view would be better if you were taller. Oh, stop it. Kurama grumbles and tries his best to scowl at Naruto when the kid breaks in and giggles. Hey, knock it off. We're related, remember? This is probably as tall as you're going to get to. Naruto grins up at him, grabbing for his hand. I like you like this, Kurama Ni, he says magnanimously. You don't need to be taller. It does Kurama's self-esteem as a fearsome former bijou no favors, but he melts a little under that. Thanks, kid, he says, and his voice is gruff because he won't allow himself to become choked up. Not right now. Want to walk, or should I carry you? I'll walk! Naruto bounces with barely contained enthusiasm. Where are we going now, Kurama Ni? Kurama pauses, stretching out his senses as subtly as he can, and concentrates. Shikaku's energy is everywhere, scattered thick across the village and through the sandstone of the buildings because he's always been a greedy, grasping bastard. Still, the original is easy enough to find. Gara is angry at something, and buildings are suffering for it. Shikaku is too close to the surface for Kurama's comfort, lashing against the seals holding him, and while they're not about to break, they're... fragile. Far too much so for Kurama's peace of mind. Still, Kurama supposes it's a good enough opportunity. He needs to slap a few modifiers onto Shikaku's seal to filter out whatever crazy he can. The stuff caused by being improperly bound for so long, at least. Shukaku's natural crazy he unfortunately can't fix. Sorry, change of plans. We need to move fast again. He says, boosting Naruto up onto his back once more and taking off at a run as soon as the boys got us a care grip. That kid I mentioned needs some help, so we're going to do that first. Across the village, something explodes! Dust fills the air in a wide cloud erupting upward and very distantly, Kurama can pick out the smell of blood on the hot wind. So Gara's already started going nuts. That's fine, though. Rattle will bring him out of it soon enough, and it's probably a recent change, so he's not mired in it yet. 
The only issue here is dealing with Chicago, and Kurama doesn't think you'll have too much of a problem with that. It's easy to tell when they're getting close because everyone is running the opposite direction, even the shinobi. Kurama wants to scoff and call them all cowards, but just sets his teeth and sticks to the edges of the retreating crowd, trying not to be noticed. A few people cast him glances, but most are too occupied with getting to safety to make note of someone moving at shinobi speeds in the shadows. Up ahead, the streets empty out completely, and Chikaku's murderous chakra gets heavier. Kurama pauses, glancing around, and then leaps up the side of a flat-topped apartment building. Stay here, he tells Naruto. Fuji, keep an eye on him. I have to go beat some sense into that idiot's thick head, and I don't want either of you getting caught in the crossfire. The vixen yips softly, hopping down and going to wind around Naruto's legs. Before Kurama can move, though, Naruto catches his hand again and asks warily, You're gonna come back, right, Kuramani? Of course I am, kid. Kurama promises, leaning down to press a kiss to his bright hair. You're the most important thing in the world to me. I will always come back for you. That gets him a smile as bright as the sun. Good luck, Kuramani. I know you can win. Kurama chuckles, rising to his feet. Shukaku roars, clearly about to break free entirely, and it makes him turn, leaping down into the epicenter of the destruction. He takes a breath and lets go, his chakra rising in a corrosive blood-red surge to meet the Ichibis, and then shouts, Oi, Shikaku! Who's got your penis in a bunch this time, you touchy little bastard? Within the dust and rubble, something stills, then stirs. Kurama flicks a hand out, and wind whips past him just enough to dispel the cover. What was once probably a nice square is now little more than a wreckage of shattered stone and debris, clothes and other things scattered through it. In the center, the area around him, seething with animated sand, stands Gara, no more than Naruto's age, with dead eyes and sand coating his body. Even as Kurama watches, more slides over him, and it's easy to recognize the beginnings of his transformation into a human-sized version of Shikaku. You, Gara says, and it's layered with Shikaku's deeper voice. Don't call me my name like you know me, you puny little human. I am- Yeah, yeah, the great and terrible Ichibi, possessing the fewest tails of any of the tail beasts, but somehow still so high and mighty. Kurama scoffs, crossing his arms over, is just unnearing his eyes. Look at you! You really think this is what the sage meant our power for, you idiot? You're corrupting a child, and you're even doing that badly! For all the times he gives in, how many times does he resist you? How many times has little Gara here shown just how much stronger than you he is? Shokako owls with rage, lashing out, but Kurama sees it coming and hurls himself to the side, then shoves Chakra towards his feet and flips up and over, landing on Shukaku's far side. Even as Shukaku spins toward the spot Kurama used to be, with a smile of victory, Kurama lunges forward, Chakra gathering in his palm and slaps a hand against Shukaku's sand. Fire blooms beneath his touch, roaring out in the heavy coating of earth crackles as it hardens. Shukaku screams, whipping around, but Kurama's already gone, landing lightly behind his shoulder. I'll kill you, Chikaku screams. Your blood will soak my sand because no one could surpass my- ah! Another wave of fire falls away and Kurama smacks. He drops it to a crouch, flexing his clawed hands against the sandy earth and taunts. How about a test then, little brother? My speed and fire against your sand and automatic defense. The winner gets that little boy you're torturing. Sound fair? Seeing that the tanuki is about to start screaming again, he adds with all the casualness he can manage. Oh, wait, never mind. You always were too scared to bet against me, Shukaku. I guess a few centuries haven't changed anything. Huh. There's a long moment of silence, and then Shukaku hisses like a tea kettle releasing steam. Karama, he growls. I heard the humans locked you away as well. You managed to consume that little creature's soul entirely and take that body. I'm impressed. The memory of his Naruto falling, empty-eyed and devoid of life, hits Garama so hard and suddenly that for a moment he can't even breathe. His entire chest seizes as pain lances through him and he snarls automatically. His chakra redoubles, lashing furiously against Shukaku's and Garama throws himself forward, edged with power, his long nails scored deep in ardent sand and he blurs away before Shukaku can even turn to catch him. 
Another hit, scoring deep into one of the Tanuki's arms. Another to the back of the head. Another, another, another. The perfect balance of chakra caught in the palm of his hand is spinning like a hurricane. Negative and positive, dark and light, caught up together in a violet edge snarl of power and intense, but bigger than ever before, not nearly enough to kill. It was a gift! Karama screams above Shukaku's roar of frustration. A sacrifice for me! I can't help you understand right now, you self-obsessed bastard, but someday I will make you! He doesn't let the Bijudama go, but leaps forward, aiming straight for Shikaku's chest. It won't hurt Gara, not at half power like this, but an impact like a detonation, and is like being caught in the heart of a sandstorm. Sand explodes outward, stinging and biting, and Garama throws up an arm to shield his face. There's a ripple of chakra as the pressure vanishes entirely, Shikaku retreating with a last wounded roar as a small form becomes visible through the cloud. Red hair glows in the light of sunset as Gara wavers and Karama automatically steps forward to catch him. The small, fragile body is humbles into his arms, and Karama lifts him, murmuring mindlessly soothing nonsense as he tucks the kid's head under his chin. Chakra pulls in his free hand, and he presses it to the back of Gara's neck, etching the seal into his skin as gently as he's able. Gara makes a soft sound of surprise and faint pain, but Karama strokes his hair, whispering, Sorry, sorry, is that better? Can you hear him any more? There's a long, careful pause, and then Gara looks up. Wide, aquamarine eyes stare at him for a second, and then Gara breathes. Mother? He ain't your mother, kid, Karama says dryly. It's a good thing, believe me. He reaches up, touching the kanji that's only just started to scar over on Gara's forehead, and adds, Your real mother loved you. She poured all of her love into your sand right before she died. Why do you think your automatic defense is so strong? Gara's breath catches and he drops his eyes. You shouldn't... touch me, he says, trying for anger, but it wobbles as it comes out. I'll... I'll kill... You won't. Karama hesitates, then ruffles his hair. Besides, I can handle Chicago, kid. Leave my stupid little brother to me. You've got more important things to worry about. Like friends. I have no friends... Gara says, and that at least comes out sharp with an edge of fury that means the pain still hasn't healed. No one loves me, and I don't want them to. I live only for myself. Mother understands. Not your mother. Karama repeats, rolling his eyes. Tanuki always making things harder than they have to be. When the six-year-old starts to jerk in his arms, sand hissing threateningly around them, he just shifts the boy to his hip, then leaps up to the top of a collapsed wall, and from there jumps back to the rooftop where he left Naruto. Karamani! Naruto shouts the instant they touch down. He rushes forward, throwing himself at Garama as the redhead crouches down and accidentally catches Gara in the enthusiastic hug as well. Karamani, that was amazing! You've got to be the best shinobi ever! Can you teach me to be as awesome as you? Can you? Please! No one's as awesome as me, kid. Karama laughs, setting Gara down and raising a brow when he skitters backwards away from Naruto's bright grin. But I think you might manage to get close someday. With a lot of training and a bit of luck. He waves a hand between the two boys. Naruto, Gara. Gara, Naruto. You're both a jerky. Naruto's entire expression lights up and he reaches forward to catch Gara's hand. Gara flinches, the scattered sand around their feet rolling closer, but Naruto just beams. Let's be friends! He proposes. I've never had a friend besides Okaki Gigi before, but I've always wanted one! For a long minute, Gara looks like he can't decide whether to kill them all, turn and run, or throw himself at Naruto and not let go! He stares at the blonde for a moment, then shifts his gaze to Karama, who gives him a small, cooking smile. You'll be fine, Gara, he says softly. I tweaked the seal holding Shikaku back. It'll take a lot more than just you getting angry or scared for him to escape now, so you don't have to worry about hurting anyone. Blue-green eyes go very wide, and Gara looks down at where Naruto is still clutching his hand. I... I always wanted a friend, too. He admits just barely above a whisper. You'll be my friend? Yeah! Naruto agrees, all but vibrating with excitement. He turns, bouncing in place, and crows, Karamani! Karamani, look! I got my first friend! Karama laughs, reaching out the ruffle to his spiky heads.
Yeah, kid, I can see that. And it's a trace of a good memory of Garu and Naruto standing side by side, Kage and Shinobi, and still best friends, and he just... It's good. So good. With a soft laugh that nearly catches in his throat, Kurama leans forward and pulls the two pint-sized terrors into his arms, hugging them both tightly. They go stiff and startled, but Naruto hugs back that moment he recovers. Gara is a little slower, but carefully, tentatively, his arms curl around Kurama's shoulder and hang on. Why were you so angry, Gara? Naruto asks curiously, pulling back, and Gara tenses again. He doesn't move, just buries his face in Kurama's shoulder a little more firmly. My father tried to have me killed. He says he sent an assassin after me, and he didn't hurt me, but I was just so mad, and... And... It hurt. Kurama finishes for him. He rubs Gara's back lightly, thinking of the seal he had just placed on the kid. The armor of sand should be enough to keep him safe, even with Shukaku pushed down, but... What if it's not? The Kazekagi is a bastard, and what if he sends other assassins? It's not the best situation. Why don't you come with us? Naruto asks, blue eyes intent. Gara, we're going to cool places. Karamani already took us to river country and all across wind country, and I'm sure it's okay for you to come. Right, Karamani? Karama supposed to start taking Chicago to look after two little kids was always a bit of a long shot to begin with. Besides, what's to lose? Leaving Gara behind will just upset Naruto, and if the kid dies because of something Karama did to him, well, he's never loved Gara the way he loved Naruto, but the redhead was always tolerable. A friend, even when he was no longer a Jinjuriki, and Chikaku was fond of him. That's reason enough to take care of this emotionally fragile miniaturized version. Sure, he agrees, and doesn't let himself sigh. Fuji, you're good to Gary one more. From where she's been perched on a low stone wall watching the reunion, Fuji laughs. Of course, Karama-sama, she says. It's not like he's all that heavy. Karama sinks back on his heels, checking Gara's face. Do you want to come with us, kid? He asks gently. You don't have to, and I don't want to force you into anything. We're traveling, trying to find somewhere safe, so it's a bit... hectic. For a long moment, Gara stares at him. Then that assessing gaze shifts to Naruto and holds on intriguing blue, and Gara swallows. Yes, he says in a very small voice. Yes, I want to go with you. Where? I want to go with you. Your f friends. Karama finishes for him, still gentle. Okay, let's get you home so you can grab your stuff while I find us some supplies. Maybe you can even get shoes, Karamani! Naruto offers cheerfully. Kurama scoffs. Those things are uncomfortable. I'll keep my feet on the ground like they're meant to be. Thanks. Come on. Gara, you got a preference. I can carry you on my back or normally. I think Fuji still has dibs on my shoulders. That gets him another wide-eyed look. You're going to carry me? He asks. Oh, damn, soon into the fiery pits of the deepest level of hell. Damn kind of hot, too, while he's at it. Little kids shouldn't act like they've been offered the world on a platter for something so normal. It takes effort, but Karama stomps on his rage and opens his arms. Yeah, he says. Come here, squirt. Naruto, make like a monkey, would you? Naruto cheers and throws himself onto Karama's back, scrambling up and wrapping his legs around him. An instant later, Fuji flows into place like a particularly furry scarf, and Garama raises a brow of the only holdout. Gara looks between him and his outstretched arms, then offers a very faint, weary smile and steps forward. He grabs Karama's shoulders as Karama lifts him, clinging tightly, and Karama shifts to resettle the weight. All right, which way? He asks. Gara points to a street several blocks from the Kazekage's building. The one without lights on, he says, and then tucks his face into the curve of Karama's throat. Karama jaggles and strokes his hair, then ruffles Naruto's and leaps lightly across the narrow street, heading for the indicated house. He'll let the kid grab what he wants, maybe ask him to lend Naruto some clothes, and see what he can scrounge from the kitchen for supplies. By then, it should be dark enough for them to make it over the cliffs unseen. Maybe Suna was a bit of a dead end, but at least it got the freak squad off their tails. 
And besides, now that Kurama takes a moment to consider it, Matatabi has always been a hell of a lot more motherly than Chicago, and is generally pretty reasonable too. Maybe Kurama doesn't know exactly where Matatabi and the Nibis host are right now, but surely they can't be that hard to find. On his back, Naruto laughs, bright and happy, and out of the corner of his eye, Kurama can just barely see Gara smiling back, still tentative, but already gaining confidence. Kurama smiles too, entirely despite himself. Whatever, it'll all work out. <laughs>